Uh, you're watching Movie Guide. I'm Jeremy Carroll. You join me on the teal carpet of season four of The Chosen. Let's talk to some of the cast and crew. So this season is darker, a little more intense, getting a little more serious, yeah. yet there's that glimmer of hope. Why is that important for society in today's day? Because that's the example Jesus gave us. He gave us the example of his life as a proof of a reason to hope. And I think by people connecting to him, uh, however it happens, whether through Bible, through church, through a television show that gets them to go to church, gets them to open the Bible, um, all of that leads back to the evidence of hope. We don't shy away in this season from the bittersweet, from the pain, the suffering. I think if we ignore that or gloss over it or imply that Jesus just makes everything okay, I think we're not being honest. And I think for people who are struggling, they go, wait, so if Jesus isn't here to just touch my arm and make it all better or heal my marriage, then what do I have? So we have to go through that. However, throughout this season, you also see Jesus saying, stay with me, stay with me. You may not experience the conclusion of this just yet, but I promise if you stay with me, if you keep your eyes on me, there is a conclusion to this story and it is joyous and it is peaceful and it is all the things that I promise. It just isn't now. And so season four, the fans are gonna have to deal with some of that. Not all the questions that are asked this season, not all of the struggles that they experience are answered in this season. And I think that's important to experience because that's life. Yeah. And along those lines, it seems like it's a little more intimate with one-on-one -on -one with Jesus and the disciples. What are some of those lessons that the disciples really need to learn this season? Well, they don't learn them this season. And that's true from the scriptures. You see that Jesus, it's funny, we sometimes forget this. Jesus told them exactly what was going to happen. I'm going to die. I'm going to resurrect. We're going to be persecuted. My, my name is going to be th uh, spread throughout the world. They're like, yeah, great to hear. Um, so when we're in heaven, um, wh what's the seating arrangement? Could we be closer to you in all your glory? And he's like, are you kidding me? And so we explore some of that in this season too. Um, I'm glad that we now can look back on it. We have the luxury of knowing what they didn't know at the time, where this story went. But I think we're still facing some of these same struggles and some of these same desires that they faced. I think it's important to be reminded of what the answers are. And bringing Chosen to Los Angeles is kind of like a unique opportunity. How are you feeling tonight? Well, that's the thing. I, th this is a fan, ex this, th 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 I was gonna, let me try that again. This isn't a fan experience. This is more of a family gathering. It's a teal carpet, not a red carpet. Yes, we need things like this because it does expand the reach of the show. It does get it out to more people. And I don't want our fans to be scared of things like that. But at the same time, we need to make sure that we don't change who we are. The content doesn't change, our goals don't change, and the teal doesn't change to red. All right, downtown Los Angeles, the chosen. How are we feeling tonight? Look, Un go. Un unbelievable. I think that the, the thing that is the best here is that we've got fans coming from all over, not only the States, I'm sure all over the world coming to watch us here. It's absolutely unbelievable. I don't know how many TV shows can say that from every single corner of the world. We heard that it was showing in Madagascar and they translated the show into Madagascar. I don't know if that's the correct language. I'm, I hope it is, but it is. it's just crazy. The, 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 the corners of the globe that we're reaching. Yeah, I mean, this is crazy. Downtown LA, uh, I went to school around here, so this feels like my second home. They say downtown LA is the edge of everything and nothing, so here we are. <laughs> and so this season, shifting gears a little bit, is a little bit darker than typical, but there's that beacon of hope at the end. Why is that important for society today? Man, I think that everybody has gone through some really tough times in the last few years. It doesn't matter what corner of the world you're in. And to be able to light up the darkness um, is something that I think people have been waiting for. Uh, and I think that um, we're, we're just really lucky to be on a show that makes light of the dark, even if we have to go there. And it's actually a quote from my character from, uh, from John's book, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. So uh, that seems to be a theme as well in the show. And uh, I think that, again, that one of the major things is the fact that these fans have been with us since day one. And uh, they are not only there for us, they're there for each other. Uh, you know, I'm wearing colors for a, a chosen fan who unfortunately lost his life, uh, lost his battle with, with cancer. And when the fans found out about this, this poor young boy, uh, this is the orange and purple, when they found out, they rallied together and the entire chosen fan base embraced him, his memory. And, and, and what a fantastic individual he was. So uh, it, it, honestly, it, I'm so proud to be part of this family. It's really a testament to like how the show has really brought everyone together. And it seems like the cast is really close as well. Do you guys feel like you're part of a family now with this cast? You know, filming the show can get so tough. And depending on the schedules, you might have to go from night shoots, maybe a 24-hour turnaround, have to go to morning shoots. 
and we all help each other, whether it's staying up, waiting for your castmate to get off set and running lines with them. It's that sort of support. Like George, when I first came on the show, came over to my house at 11 p.m. to run lines with me. And it's those moments that really pick us up. So we pick each other up when we're down because as much as it's high up and we support each other's family, it's more about supporting each other when we're down too. And we legit are mates off screen. Like yeah. all of us hang out with each other all the time. I just played some board games with Noah literally two days ago who plays Andrew. Uh, us two, we go shopping all the time. All Thank the time. goodness we didn't wear the same thing tonight. That I mean, happens took, all the took, time. He took the Crocodile Dundee hat idea off me, but uh, apart from that, yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, do you doom scroll endlessly like I do? Lost in a pit of despair sometimes? It's really hard to look at the world around us, and it, it was then as well. It's always been. That's part of the human condition. But there always is that hope. There's always a way to make your life better, make the lives of others around you better. And I think that's what we try to do as characters. That's certainly what we try to do as actors. That's yep. why we tell stories to, to lift people up and celebrate the human condition. The Chosen now, we got it in downtown Los Angeles. How does that feel? What's that like? That's my home. I drove here. Okay, normally I'm like flying. I like got in my Prius and meandered my way to the premiere. Very easy. I, I enjoyed this. And so along the lines of that, have you felt that with the growth of The Chosen, has that affected production in any way or the way you approach your character? Zero in terms of character. Like, we tried to tune all that stuff out. Once it comes to actually filming the episodes, we are like, what am I doing right now? Who am I? Who am I speaking with? It's all back to square one in a way, except by now we're in season four. And so we've all lived and breathed this for so many years that you pick up right where you left off, but you don't let the outside noise sort of get in the way. And the fan base is almost like a family that kind of rally around the chosen. And is the cast kind of becoming like a small family in a way? Oh, 100%. Listen, when you walk the steps that we do every day in the 100 million degree heat, or you're like freezing to the point where your potato sack is just stiff, you can't even sit down. You start to bond, you trauma bond, if you will. Uh, we've done a lot of that trauma bonding. We've taken the pickle shots, which is just brine, getting you electrolytes so that you don't die while filming. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think we're definitely a bit of a family now. Have you seen any other opportunities coming out after doing The Chosen or anything with your own career? Oh, yeah. I mean, for sure. The Chosen has completely changed my life. Even, you know, SAG was on strike this year. The fact that we got an interim agreement, that, that SAG and The Chosen worked together to be able to, that we could finish telling this story for season four, it's incredible. And I never would have been able to even be working during that if it wasn't for The Chosen and saying we treat our actors really well. We believe in what SAG is trying to do. It's a very, very special thing to be a part of. So this season is taking a bit of a turn. Where are our characters going to be this season? Quintus is just going to be a nice guy <laughs> doing nice things, as usual. And he's going to get even nicer this season. Um, JK, he gets worse. Uh, please try to remember that I'm actually a, a nice a nice person. So, spoiler alert. Hey, come on. Yeah, spoiler alert. Quintus and Atticus go into business together. They open a sandwich shop in Jerusalem. It's true. And look, great sandwiches. Uh -huh. Atticus happens to be a vegetarian, so it's mostly falafel, dolmas, spanikopita. Adopted from the Greeks. To tell you the truth, Quintus. Quintus is mostly into skewers, but Atticus is against it categorically. So he wants to skewer. A couple kind of a he thing. wants to skewer everything. It's everything. like every you know, puppy dogs, lambs, Can I skewer it? little Can lambs. I skewer it? How does it taste? How does it taste? Yeah. He keeps asking Atticus, like, how does it taste? I don't know how it tastes. You think he would? He steals enough food. I eat apples and apricots and dates. Can you skewer it? Hola, hola. I mean, he he's, wants to skewer and set everything on fire. But hey, it's a thriving enterprise. <laughs> it's worked uh, well enough so far. What do we call the sandwich shop? Uh, I think we call it... Yuminous Dominus. Yuminous Dominus. 
That's actually yeah, kind of yeah, it's yeah. kind of good. Yeah. Let's catch Get some Uber Eats going on in there, and you're all set. Yeah, minus dominus. Oh, perfect. It still hasn't hit me actually, though. Not, not. I think so. That's yeah. like you kind of don't really feel like you're here until like later. Like, wait, did that just happen? And I think that's the moment we're in right now. We're just kind of surreal seeing all these people, so many familiar faces. Fans have been with us since the beginning. Our beautiful co-stars we haven't seen since we wrapped. It's been a really beautiful day. Yeah. And the chosen is really like elevated women to the forefront of this story kind of for the first time I feel like which is pretty awesome how has that been with the fans and the interacting with everyone and how's the reception been I think what's so beautiful whenever you see fans coming up and saying that they love the female characters they relate to the female characters I just love that they're relating and not even just to us they're relating to everybody in some in some way depending on where they're at in their lives they might relate to one more than the other, but everyone is so relatable, and they're they're getting that from from the way that everyone is portraying. You're just so proud. Okay, go to really real quick. To go back to your first question, what I what now just hit me was it's so cool to just be celebrating all of this, knowing that like I we work together for I don't know how many months, and I saw all the work that she got to do, and everybody that's here. And then we get to see it on the big screen. So I think I think what I'm excited about is I get to see all my friends yeah. doing such a great job. And they work so hard and they're so talented and so beautiful. And I don't know if you've seen it yet, but it's definitely going to blow you away once you do see it. It might break your heart a little bit too. And one of the things that I know for sure that they do with the women is that they're telling real and truthful stories, authentic stories, things that we go through that may not seem like a big deal to, you know, the mass, but like, there, there's someone who relates to that. There's someone who feels like, for example, in season three, that conversation between Tamar and Mary. There's so many people who've had that experience in their life where you, they've judged their own challenges and, and weaknesses against someone else's strength, and there was misunderstanding. You just never know someone's story. And they're telling women's stories authentically, and it's just been really beautiful to live that out with these gorgeous, talented women and showing that women are not monoliths which has been really important to me, yeah. This season's a little bit darker, a little more intense, but there's a glimmer of hope. Why is that important for society today, to see that glimmer of hope? Have you seen the world out there? I'm just, I'm just real quick, that's all I want to say. Oh my gosh. We, I mean, uh, the spirit craves triumph at the end of the day. We want to know that there's something to be hopeful for, and there is, because it's already promised to us. It's no longer a burden that we have to carry, but sometimes we forget because daily life gets hard, daily life gets heavy and difficult, and we start to live with in ourselves and in this world and forget about the glory that's after. And so I think The Chosen does a really nice job of showing that transition of like, yes, we're in it, we're suffering, we're going through this, but look at the bigger picture and look at where this is going. And it shows like this cycle of triumph at the end. And I think that's really important when you have so much kind of traumatic stuff going on right now. and. All the stuff you see on TV too sometimes is pretty traumatic. So it's really nice to have something kind of uplifting. But but real yeah. and raw. Yeah. Because it's not just gonna make you feel good, but it's gonna also tear at those hard strings. Because that's life. I mean that's 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 life. That's our world today too. I mean, you uh, can't avoid the darkness even by hiding. Like it's it's just it's part of life. Um, to find hope, though, through that and to um, find the light in, in that or to even battle that is so important. <laughs> and I think this season really shows um, how, how to do that, you know, and how to find hope. And uh, Mary this season especially is starting to realize, like, the, the hurt doesn't always go away even though there's joy. And so just the bittersweetness of life is, is just, that's life. <laughs> And along those lines, like, what are some of the big key lessons the whole cast kind of has to learn through Jesus this season? Um, that, that, I mean, we, we don't always get to understand why things happen or how things happen. Uh, that doesn't mean that you just give up, and that doesn't mean that you um, give up faith. And, and it's important to keep finding the love and the and, and hope and friendship and... and um, and compassion for others is, is so important. Um, and yeah, it's it's just, it's very a very human season. And I think anyone that might be going through some difficult times might actually find some solace in it. 
and doing the chosen now how has that affected like how you approach your work how approach your life your faith it's i mean the chosen even just booking it was this massive lesson of like God has better plans than I can imagine, that I, I can't plan my life. I can't plan, um, you know, I can't even dream of how wonderful things can be. I was very cynical when I first booked this. I was in a really, you know, sort of um, down spot in my life. And um, and it's just, it's taught me to trust again and, and to find hope and, and joy again. And, um, and that some of my more painful moments in life really informed my performance in playing Mary in the first episode. Of, of she was in such a, a painful place, and I related to her at that moment. And so I am in very odd ways grateful for those experiences to, to help me understand Mary in ways that I don't think I would have been able to otherwise. So um, there are bigger plans <laughs> for us that, that we don't always get to understand when or why they happen, but to, to have some faith in it. Thanks for watching. And for more videos like this, subscribe to Movie Guide and check out the review of season four of The Chosen at movieguide.org. If you enjoy videos that follow your values like ours and you want to help us continue, uh, go to movieguide.org slash donate because we're actually a nonprofit. You may not know that, but we're working in Hollywood every day to help families have more choices that follows their values. And also subscribe right now.